Hi, pre-calc people. This is Miss Adams from Flamingo Math. Today we're looking to finish lesson 2-2, talking about change in linear and exponential functions. We've already seen how the output values of a function change at a constant rate when the function is linear. But now we want to look at what happens when the output values change in a proportional fashion. When your sequence is geometric, the rate of change will increase or decrease as the value of n increases. So on equal spaced input intervals, the output values are going to change proportionally. In this first example, we want to complete the table looking at the rate or the ratio between 64 and 32. Seems to me that the ratio is cutting that term in half. We're dividing by two or multiplying by half. That's our proportional factor. So 32 divided by two is 16. When the n value is three, this point here looks like 16. 16 cut in half is eight. 8 divided by 2 is 4, 4 times a half is 2, and 2 times a half is 1, so our rate is 1 half. Find the common ratio and write that explicit rule. We're talking about geometric rules. a sub n is our first term, 64, and our proportional factor, 1 half, and to the n minus 1 power. Now we can think of that one half to the n and one half to the negative one power separately like that. So one half to the negative one power is two. Since that flips, we have 64 times two. You could rewrite that as 128 times one half to the n power if you wanted to use that zero term. So the a sub zero term would have been 128. Part C, just like we did in our last lesson, we can write an exponential function that corresponds to the nth term expression using function notation. f of n is 64 times 1 half to the n minus 1 power or you could also write f of n is 128 times 1 half to the n power. Either one would be acceptable. Example 9, given the geometric sequence where the first term is 144 and the third term is 36, state the domain and the range. Once again, we're going to use that geometric mean multiplying 144 times 36, and taking the square root, 144 times 36, and the square root of that, so that we have the second term, a sub 2. And 144 times 36, the square root is 72. So 144, 72, divided in half is 36, cut that in half is 18, 9, 9 over 2, and then 9 over 4. So again, our rate in this one is also 1 half, but we're just listing the domain, which is a discrete set of information, just the x-coordinates from 1 through 7, integer values, and then the range are the discrete y-values, just the ordered pair that represents the y coordinate on our discrete data. So domain and range. It's not a continuous function, it's just discrete data points. Write an exponential function whose domain is all real numbers that will contain the domain of the sequence from example nine, so f of n, is the a sub 1 term, which is 144. Our rate was 1 half to the n minus 1. And again, I can keep the 1 half to the n. 
and I can translate one half to the negative one power is two over one to the positive power, which gives us the a sub zero term, 288, with our proportional factor of a half to the n power. So either one of those would work for writing that discrete data as a function from the data points in example nine. In example 11, we're gonna look at how the explicit formula for the nth term, which is our g sub n equation, we can model that by an exponential function that relates to a times b to the x. Also, the kth term formula using any two terms, we can graphically correspond this k of kth formula to that format for a exponential function. Let's go explore that a little bit in this example. So we're given the sequence 3, 6, 12, 24, 48, 96, and so forth. So filling in down that column, 3, 6, 12, 24, 48, 96, and so forth. We have the a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, a sub 5, a sub 6, and a sub n, or the f of 2 through f of 6 to complete that function notation or the subset notation. Either one will be acceptable in our course. So writing the subscript notation, a sub n, is 3 times 2 to the n minus 1, and the f sub n is 3 times 2 to the n minus 1. Let's write the first six terms for the sequence, 6 times 1 half to the n minus 1. Substituting n equals 1, we're going to have the first term is 6, n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4, n equals 5, and n equals 6 produced that set of ordered pairs for our first six terms in that sequence. How can we find the a sub 0 term in the sequence and show our work to support that? Well, a sub 0 is going to be 6 times 1 half to the 0 minus 1 power. And I said a sub 0. They've, our notes are written a of n. So a sub 0 is 6 times 1 half to the negative 1 power. That gives us a sub 0 is 12. And then finally, write the exponential form of that formula, the f of n is 12 times 1 half to the n power. You could also translate this as f of n is 6 times 1 half to the n minus 1 power. And then we want to look at a couple of application problems to finish up the lesson. In 13, Tim released a helium-filled balloon. It rose 200 feet in the first minute, and in each succeeding minute, the balloon rises only 50% as far as it rose in the previous minute. That's the key to our rate. We want to write a general formula, A of n, that gives the number of feet risen during the nth minute of the balloon for time that it's spent in the air. So I think our key factor here is going to be that we have um, the balloon rises only 50% as far as it rose in the previous minute. So that tells us that the rate is decreasing each minute by a half. Our rate is decreasing each minute by a half. So the a sub n or a of n term would be 200 to start and one half to the n minus 1 power. 
completing that table 200 times a half, 100 times a half, at 4, n is 4, that's 25, then 12 and a half, 6 and a quarter, 3.125, and 1.5625. We want to use the formula in part A to find the height it reaches after 8 minutes. So that sounds like we need to add up those eight terms, which would be 200, 100, 50, 25, and so forth, all the way down to 1.5625. If you have your calculator handy, you can add those up with me. And I believe I get 398.5625. Four, three, seven, five feet. So in eight seconds, the balloon has reached 398.4375 feet. Our last example, number 14, tells us that Big Tech Electronics advertises a monthly payment plan for the purchase of the best-selling tablet. Buyers pay $50 at the end of the first month, 55 at the end of the second month, 60, 50 at the end of the third month, and so on for one year. What will the payments be at the end of the fourth, sixth, and tenth months? So thinking that through, we got one, two, three. One was 50, two was 55, three was 60 and a half. So our rate is 1.1. The fourth month would be 66.55. The fifth month, let's see, the sixth month would be $80.52, or if you round it up, $80.53. And then the tenth month is 117 and 89 cents, or if you round it up, $117.90. If we want to know how much the customer pays for the tablet, with this payment plan, we, want it, we would want to add up the first term, the second term, the third term, and so on until we got to the 12th term. So I think I want to write a general rule to figure that out. Or if you just continue calculating, I believe it should work out to be 10 to 69 and 21 cents, but we can check that by writing the general rule. A of N started out with $50. We're gonna multiply by a factor of 1.1 each month to the N minus one power. We can write that as a function rule to be 500 over 11 times 1.1 to the n power, or you can reduce that down to be 4545 times 1.1 to the n power. What does the ratio represent in context to the scenario? When you look at this ratio here, 1.1, that means 1 plus 1 tenth. So 1 is the initial or the beginning, and a tenth means that we're paying 10% interest on our balance each month. So that was a pretty quick lesson. I'll see you next time for lesson number 3 in Chapter 2.